This symposium has at least two purposes. To explore the concept of global blackness as a worthy intellectual object or attractive device that might open out unexpected modes of analysis and theorization relating to capital, consent, and citizenship, at least. What can global blackness do as a gathering notion that allows a capacious consideration of black thought as resistant act or willful transgression? How can global blackness help us retrim our sails toward the waters of black liberation from race? In this exploratory essay, I would like to offer a way of thinking about the generative processes that bring about and sustain a specific form of globalizing blackness, namely an abject or spectral blackness. These generative processes, I argue, to be inherent in modern power modalities, but complexly folded by time. Social media in the digital era, thinking primarily in this instance of platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and Instagram, is largely premised on the so-called democratization of opinion, engagement, and in theory, knowledge production. It is also a moment marked by the ratcheting up of anonymous hate speech and what Tom Nichols calls the death of expertise. Because most people do not understand the history of peoples of African descent. Therefore, they're at a real loss, but they're making policies all the time that affect peoples of African descent. So that's the travesty of um, official, official ignorance. During much of the 20th century, influential South Africans, both white and black, have viewed black Americans as ambiguous symbols of advancement for South Africa's black population. At the same time, white South Africans committed to racial separation look to America, and especially the American South, for both models and cautionary tales. So I'm generally not of the opinion that the notion of global blackness does much work for Africanists, with perhaps the exception of South Africa, where an almost 350-year history of white supremacy reorganized, recategorized, and redesignated people, places, and entitlements on the basis of pigment. Dawson argues that because race has been the predominant factor in black Americans' experience, and I quote, it was much more efficient for them to use the status of the group, both relative and absolute, as a proxy for individual utility. Now importantly then, I want to stress the blackness is a social construct. Even within the black radical tradition, blackness is a social construct. Um, we've, had, we've heard blackness kind of be reduced to a cultural essence, so we've heard blackness be reduced to a biological essence. But within black radicalism, what blackness is, it's a political essentialism. And that's really important. It's a political essentialism. It's people coming together and saying, we are black and this means something. And it means something because of the politics. And that's basically it, right? There's very little cultural politics around it. It is, we come together because we look like this. This, mean, this is meaningful that we look like this. And therefore, we have a politics of, uh, of solidarity. <laughs>